Hello all. So this is the Bench Dogs metric fence system with the under rail support and right side fence. In this video, I'm going to be giving it what I feel is a much needed upgrade. This upgrade is to address an issue I discovered recently while cutting draw bottoms for my modular workshop cabinet build. They were all out, sometimes nearly as much as 2 mil out over a 400 mil length. Turns out the under rail support must have had a knock and was slightly askew. The under rail support dog, designed to stop the rail flexing back with a cut, didn't correct it. Most obviously I guess as, although it has a flat edge to follow the rail, it does in the end sit in a round hole. So if the rail is out of kilter, the dog isn't going to do much to correct that. The under rail being just 9mm by 20mm, I always recognised as a weak point. Although my addition has the under rail attached via a connecting bar, I don't think the newer one piece version will fare any better. We're still talking about a 9 by 20 mil extrusion jutting out of a 2040 profile fence. With the best will in the world, kit is going to take a knock eventually in busy workshops. Especially kit like this fence, which I don't keep in place, but bring out when needed, only to stow away again when I finished. In the course of making this fence more robust, I redesigned, and I think improved, my old front pin for the hinged guide rail too, helping maintain a 600mm cut capacity. I'll cover that later in the vid. To start then, the fences need to be stripped down, which basically means removing the flip stops and the fence dogs. The grand idea then, is simply to lay the fence flat rather than upright. The normal front has a blank slot on which the scale is etched. I'll need all the slots, so the front now becomes the bottom across the 40mm width is going to be stiffer than across the 20 Before I bother with all this though, I dig out my precision straight edge to just check the profile is in fact flat and straight. Worth checking any profiles you're ever in receipt of like this. I have had to return a couple I've bought for my over router that were bent. Thankfully though, this fence is still true. Now I can get to marking the cutaway that will give me my new, wider and stiffer under rail fence. You can see there the mark I've scratched across the rail. For the thickness, inside the slot of the rail itself, there are already centre marks as part of the extrusion form. It's at 10mm on a 20mm profile, so I'll cut just to one side of it, leaving around 9mm. Cross cut on the mitre saw, which I've limited the depth of, then onto the band saw to cut away the remaining. And there, hopefully, you can see how this should be much stiffer than the original 9x20 under rail fence. Bit of sandy bow bandy to ease over the cut edges. I wasn't aiming for perfect, but I'll settle for it, know what I mean? Here I've got another of my gnarly lengths of 2020 profile leftovers you might have seen me use a bunch of in my profile build series. This one's got a bunch of holes in it already, so will serve my purposes quite well. I drop a couple of M5 screws into it, which then, in turn, get one of these sliding T-nuts. Then I slide it onto the fence. The exact same gets done to the right side fence too. Why bother adding this second piece of extrusion on top then? Well, simply because on these, I like to double up the bolts for the fence dogs. They come designed for just one fixing, really, via a star knob. But I found that when you're putting the fence in place for use, then taking it off and stowing it, etc., the dogs can be prone to twisting, pivoting around the single fixing, meaning an inevitable reset and check every time you dig it out. Doubling up the fixings like I'm doing here sets the dog solid to the fence, and they're going nowhere. Notice the order I did the fixings up in. The bottom ones onto the black profile fence first, then the top ones into the silver profile, knowing the dogs will align it perfectly to the one beneath. Then finally, the screws in the top of the silver profile attaching it to the bottom, rock solid. Set in place, a quick check that a piece can pass between left and right fence uninterrupted. The under rail is so much stiffer in the direction that counts. It's night and day to the old one. I can still use the under rail support dog, not needed for lighter work, but it's still a decent precaution when I'm cutting heavy timbers for furniture. Really pleased with it so far. The bench dog's flip stops thoughtfully come with a 20mm and a 40mm side. As you can see, it's the 20mm side I need now. It meant that for one of them, I had to reverse the stop, but it's just undoing a single bolt and flipping the stack. All good. Good thing about having the right side fence is that where your scale ends on the right at say 200mm to allow for your rail, any cuts you want under that can be done on the right using its scale. I find this really handy. Wait, did someone mention scale? Well, my stick on scale hadn't arrived at this point, so to save confusion in the shots, I'll stay chronological and cover that at the end. Chuffed as I am with the new fence, it does mean that my old pin for the guide rail now restricts my cut to just under 580mm. It's important to me that it's 600 I do love my old pin, the build I covered in my original retractable hinged guide rail video. It's solid and easy to adjust. 
but its body below the bench can't come out any further to give me any more room, and I don't want any pin assembly hanging out the front of the bench, no siree. A redesign is in order then, and if I'm going to bother, I should try and make it better. So here's the kit I've put together. I've got the original under rail piece to repurpose as the front pin, a section of 2020 profile, a couple of alley corner plates, and a small offcut of 2060 profile I found in the recycle bin, along with some fixings. I have a bunch of drop-in tees on the corner plates. Drop-ins just make it easier to assemble than sliding tees in pieces that are perpendicular to each other. I roughly center the 2060 perpendicular to the 2020. Then turn all the drop-in tees on the plate so they'll align to the slots. Then drop the plate in place, roughly centered along one of the spines. I'll use a square reference from the 2020 to keep things true as I tighten down. It's important the pin rides straight up and down. If it's not square to the bench top, it could throw your guide rail out of square at different heights. Then I can place the pin next to the first plate and fix the second. This position friction tight to the pin to eliminate side to side movement, but loose enough to still allow it to freely move up and down. The beauty of this old under rail piece is it still has the 6mm slot underneath. So in goes a Tina, M6 this time, as the only suitable star knob I had was M6. One of the ones that actually came originally with the fence as it happens. I'd pre-drilled the hole in the 2060 profile for the star knob to go through, but yeah, this is going to work nicely, I think. The slot on the underside of the Maffel and Bosch guide rails is a tad over 7mm. I cut a 8mm on the bandsaw. Then it's a matter of filing the pin a little at a time, checking after every few strokes against the rail until you get perfect fit. That's ideal. Fits, but with zero play. Out with the old pin, in with the new. To fix the new one to the bench, I do a through hole either side of the cutaway in the front there. These I counterbore with a large bit to sink the bolt heads. The through bolts will have these flat sliding T-nuts on the end, onto which I can simply slide the new mount for the pin. Then tightening from above. Star knob in from the rear gets an appropriate T-nut. And lastly, the pin wrestled in place. When tightened from the rear, it's really solid. It had no play at all, and trying to move it just rocks the bench. Nice. This new pin kind of gives me everything I want. It drops out of the way of the bench top easily, raises up to a maximum of 60mm, is flush with the bench front so nothing's sticking out to catch yourself on, it's solid and easily adjustable side to side, which is an improvement over the old one. Plus, being so low profile, it gives me back the 600mm cut capacity with the new fence orientation. A pretty clean solution for a front pin from off the shelf parts, I think. The pin itself, you could just as easily do the same with a piece of any T track. My dial in chi is the same you may have seen me do before. With the pin set to height and its mount loosened off, I fix the guide rail square to the rail, flush it to the fence, then clamp it. With that set, I can lock the rail down to the rail square, then back to the pin, slot it in place, and tighten down. I double check everything with some other squares. No unwanted wiggles detected, but for peace of mind, time for a five cut test. If you're new to or unsure about a five cut test, you get a panel and make a cut. You then reference this first cut off the fence to make your next cut and so on, doing all four sides, each time referencing the last cut edge against the fence until you reach the first cut side again. You'll have noticed I marked a little triangle on my first cut side. When you come back around to the side you cut first for the fifth cut, you want to cut off a little strip, say around 10 mil, something easy to handle and eyeball. When you've done your fifth cut and you have your strip, you can measure it at each end with some verniers. The less the difference, the squarer your setup. At one end, the verniers were lining up perfectly at 9.8mm. At the other end, 9.7mm and change. Just under a tenth millimetre difference, or as we call it in woodworking, perfectly square. By this time, my self-adhesive metal tape had arrived. Because I have a left and right fence, I bought the 2 metre zero in the middle version. I had a bit of a dilemma about where to put it, as I wanted both the front and the top slot in the black fence part. Sticking it on the silver bit of profile was pointless, as it's too far away from the flip stops, so I considered bending the tape over the corner. This tape, however, which I assumed would be more like a heavy duty foil, is super stiff, and there's no chance it'll fold. The only reason I wanted the front slot open is to fit my angle magic. This has sliding tees on the rear to attach it to the fence. I could, however, make top plates to attach it instead, which I ended up doing, as you'll see in a minute. So bullet firmly bit, I go with sticking the tapes onto the front. 
Tape's all in place, just thought I'd show the new brackets I made for the angle magic. Drop in tees, make attachment and removal nice and quick. Only now, it's top rather than front fixing. Just like that. Magic. The very last thing then is dialing in the fence scales. I like to set my stops so the increment line is visible in front of the stop. I find if you work so it's on or covering the line, you end up getting variance. There's no trick to this really, it's just set roughly in place, cut and measure a test piece, then loosen the fence, adjust and try again if needed. Took me three or four goes both left and right before I was happy, but it's worth spending a little time on. I'll reiterate here as well that if like me, you don't keep your fence in place, but remove it when not in use, double up the fixings in the fence dogs to really lock them in place. Forget the single star knob option on the fence dogs, they just don't cut it for the task. So I guess that about wraps it up I think. I'll add this to the Profile Builds playlist as it seems more than fitting. Do give that series a watch if you haven't already. It'll give you some idea how usable and reusable this stuff is around the workshop. Worth saying that if you bought a pair of bench dogs, fence dogs and a flag stop, then purchased your profiles elsewhere, ooze nest say, you could save a few quid on the branded fence and, in my opinion, get a better fence system in the end if you doctor the under rail portion as I've shown here. Just altogether more robust. Anyways, love to hear your comments and questions below, like if you did, sub if you aren't already, and as ever, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.